let us see what is the problem. The problem is that there is a prism of mass M2 which rests on a horizontal surface that is frictionless and there is a block of mass M1. The question is when the block M1 slides down the slope what will be the acceleration of M2? Now in order to solve this problem let us first understand the simple situation in figure 2 in which there is a block of mass M1 which is kept on a on a horizontal surface. The weight of the block will be M1 times G and there would be a normal reaction to this weight which we have named as N. The, the magnitude of N will be equal to M1 times G because of the Newton's third law of motion which states that action and reaction should be same equal and opposite. Because N and Mg they are equal and opposite the block will rest on the horizontal surface and will not move. Now let us understand the situation in figure 3 in which we have a prism but that prism is attached to the ground so that it is unable to move. Now the block is the block of mass M1 is released. Now the weight of the block will be M1 times G as before and there would be a normal reaction N but the value of N would not be equal to M1 times G. So let us find what is the value of N. Now we can break uh, the force M1 into G into two components one which is perpendicular to the surface of the slope and the second which is parallel to the surface of the slope. Now this angle would be equal to angle theta. This is because the weight is perpendicular to the ground and this line is perpendicular to the slope. So angle between the normals is equal to the angle itself. So this angle would be equal to theta. If this angle is theta then this component would be m1 into g into sin theta while this component will be m1 into g into cosine theta. This we name as n dash. Now the component m1 into g into sine theta will pull the block along this slope of the prism downwards. Now let us go to figure 4. In which we have shown the prism but now it is free to move on the horizontal surface as there is no friction between the prism and the surface. Now because this is free to move the, the component of the weight
which is perpendicular to the surface of the prism will push the prism backwards. So let us assume that the acceleration of the prism is A. Then on the block M1 there is a force which is M1 times A. Now this force will will modify the normal reaction and we can find the component of this force along N dash that will be M1 into A into sine theta. This is because this angle would be equal to theta. How this angle would be equal to theta is very easy to see. Because this line and this line they are parallel while this line and this line baseline they are parallel. Therefore this angle would be equal to angle theta. Now this line is parallel to this line. Therefore this angle would be equal to this angle because they are alternate angles. If this angle is theta then the component of MA along this direction along n dash direction will be ma into sin theta. Now because of this component the value of n would be modified. Now n would be equal to m1 into g into cosine theta minus m1 a into sine theta. The horizontal component of n is n sine theta. Again that is very easy to see that this angle is equal to theta. This is because this line this line is perpendicular to this line the slope while this line is perpendicular to the base therefore this angle would be equal to angle theta So this component will be n into sine theta. The component n sine theta, the reaction of this n sine theta pushes the block, uh, pushes the prism of mass m2 in the backward direction. So we can write we can write that m1 into g into cosine theta minus m1 into a into sine theta into sine theta is equal to m2 into a. So this gives us a times m2 plus m1 into sine square theta is equal to m1 into g into sine theta cosine theta. So which gives us a equal to m1 into g into sine theta cos theta divide by 
m2 plus m1 into sine square theta. So that is the acceleration with which the prism of mass m2 would move backwards. For any further clarification or if you want to discuss any other problem, similar problem, then you can contact me at the following email address, Dr. Atish Mazumdar at gmail.com.